Vietnam, 1969, the jungles on fire. Helicopters buzz low, dropping troops into another danger zone. The U.S. soldiers are trapped, outgunned, and surrounded. The Viet Cong know the terrain. They vanish into the trees. The army can't keep up. But let's change one thing. Hovering just beyond the smoke is something no one in this war has ever seen. The AH-64 Apache, a modern attack helicopter dropped into a war it wasn't built for. Laser-guided missiles, thermal sensors, heavy armor, all from decades in the future. So what happens if the most advanced helicopter on Earth enters Vietnam in 1969? Can it change the war, or is it just one machine in the wrong time? But first, let's get one thing out of the way. Yes, the pilot and gunner haven't even been born yet. Doesn't matter. We're skipping over the time travel headaches. Just accept it. The Apache shows up fully fueled, fully armed, with a trained modern crew in the cockpit. But that's all it gets. No satellites, no drones, no spare parts from the future. Once its 16 Hellfire missiles are fired, they're gone for good. It can land at U.S. bases, refuel with 1969 jet fuel, close enough, and reload. But the base only has old-style 2.75-inch hydro rockets and some chain gun ammo. Maybe enough for one or two more sorties. It's still the same Apache, with all its power and weapons. But from this point on, it plays by 1969's rules. So what exactly does this Apache bring to the fight? Let's find out. It's basically a tank in the sky. It comes with the M230 30mm chain gun under the nose that follows the pilot's helmet. Look at a target, and the gun moves with your head. It also carries up to 16 Hellfire missiles, each one able to destroy a tank, and two rocket pods for hitting softer targets. The crew sits in an armored cockpit that can survive hits from heavy machine guns. It can fly fast, up to 180 miles per hour, and hover above the trees. Its infrared sensors see through smoke, fog, and jungle even at night. And it talks to drones, ground troops, and command in real time. Though, in 1969, that part's basically useless. This machine was made to fight modern wars. Tank battles, urban fights, enemy aircraft. Not jungles filled with hidden fighters. But in Vietnam, everything it does stands out. The thing is, Vietnam isn't a battlefield. It's a maze. And even a machine from the future can get lost in it. It's 1969. The Tet Offensive has shaken everything. Cities have burned, villages were taken, lost, and taken again, all in a single night. Now the fighting has moved into rice fields, thick jungle, and narrow, muddy rivers. This isn't a war with front lines. It's a war of traps, surprise attacks, and enemies who vanish before you can fight back. The U.S. Army depends on helicopters, mostly Hueys, to move soldiers, weapons, and supplies. But Hueys are big, noisy, and easy to shoot at. And when they get hit, they crash fast. The North Vietnamese Army, the NVA, doesn't fight like a regular army. Most soldiers wear sandals, carry AK-47s, and travel light. They dig deep tunnels, hide in villages, and use the jungle like a shield. They set up traps in the trees and build hiding spots underground. And when the helicopters fly in, they're ready. The NVA used machine guns, rifles, and RPG-7 rocket launchers to take them down sometimes from tree lines, sometimes from the ground. One lucky shot could bring a chopper crashing into the jungle. They avoid big battles on purpose. Instead, they try to wear the Americans down slowly through fear, confusion, and non-stop ambushes. And it's working. But what happens when the hunter becomes the hunted? It's early morning. Thick fog hangs in the jungle. An NVA unit is moving through the trees. Light on gear, quick on foot, just like they always do. No engines, no noise, just the rustle of leaves and boots on mud. Then, something strange. A dark shape glides overhead. Too quiet, too fast. A pair of Hellfire missiles smash into the thick jungle floor. Explosions tear up the earth. Fire rips across the treetops. A heartbeat later, the 30mm gun roars. Trees snap, men scream. The jungle cracks open. The enemy never saw a thing. This isn't like fighting Hueys. Hueys drop troops. They're loud. They give you a chance. This strike lasts seconds but shifts the battlefield. But that power is not endless, and every shot pulls it closer to empty. 
Its 30 millimeter chain gun fires up to 625 rounds per minute, and it eats through ammo fast. It carries about 1,200 rounds on board, and a full reload weighs about 900 pounds and costs tens of thousands of dollars. In the jungle, that firepower is devastating, but it doesn't last long. Once the Apache runs through its 1,200 rounds, it's completely dry. Vietnam-era U.S. forces had no way to reload that gun. Even if someone tried to fit older 20mm or 30mm shells, they wouldn't fit the chamber, feed the system, or ballistics of the M230. It's not just about size, it's about case shape, recoil, feed mechanism, and pressure tolerance. The rocket pods carry up to 38 Hydra 70s, small, unguided, 2.75-inch rockets. The exact Hydra model didn't exist in 1969, but earlier versions like the MK-40 were already in use. So U.S. bases would likely have plenty. At least that part of the Apache can be reloaded. But the Hellfires? Each one cost over $100,000 and didn't exist until the 1980s. Once all 16 are fired, that's it. The Apache runs on JP-8, a modern fuel. In 1969, U.S. bases used JP-4, which is less stable but still compatible. It would work, but barely. Expect more wear on the engines, though. And on a Vietnam-era base, the real risk is an ammo. It's that nobody knows how to fix this thing. With no trained mechanics around, even a small glitch, a loose part, a fuel leak, a cracked blade could ground it for days or forever. The Apache can clear jungle paths, stop ambushes, and support U.S. patrols in ways no Huey ever could. With its thermal sensors, it spots enemy fighters through thick trees by detecting body heat, even in fog or at night that it strikes from a distance with Hydra rockets or the 30mm chain gun, cutting down targets before they know they've been seen. In tight spots, it hovers low and scans for danger. If it spots an ambush, it fires fast before the enemy has a chance to react. It can clear a landing zone, cover advancing troops, or break contact when its patrol is pinned down. No warning, no chance to hide. But the North Vietnamese adapt quickly. They've faced B-52s, napalming gunships before. Now, they study the Apache. Scout units start watching the skies. New traps are placed higher, camouflaged better. Noise decoys go up in the trees. They spread false intel, baiting the Apache into empty zones. And they do have teeth. The Soviet-made DSHK heavy machine gun, already used to shoot down American aircraft, can punch through armor with a well-placed burst. RPG-7s, while unreliable against fast targets, still pose a threat during landings or ambushes. If the Apache hovers too long, someone might get lucky. Still, the damage adds up. The Apache can cripple supply lines and give Huey some room to breathe. But could it win the war alone? One machine with limited fuel, no spare missiles, and no real maintenance? No. But it changes the tempo. The Americans obviously can't build an entire strategy around it, but it reshapes the battlefield wherever it flies. One well-aimed shot, one mechanical failure, one mission too far, it's gone. But while it lasts, it's the sharpest blade the jungle has ever seen. Alright, so what happens when you drop a machine gun from the future into a war with no clear end in sight? As we found out, probably nothing. One chopper can't stop a jungle. It can't hold a territory, it can't fix politics, but maybe it does something else. For U.S. troops, it's a lightning strike, something that works. Patrols stop dreading the tree line. The radio calls aren't just warnings, they're requests for support. Troops start pushing deeper, knowing that thing is up there watching. It doesn't change the war, but it changes them. For the NVA, it's the opposite. They're used to ambushing helicopters not being hunted by one. Their best cover gets torched. Camouflage stops working. Suddenly, fire comes from the sky without warning or sound. Some fighters start digging deeper. Some never leave the tunnels at all. But here's the risk. Commanders get used to it. They start building missions around the Apache, assuming it'll always be there until it isn't. Because for all its power, it's still just one machine. What do you think? And hey, Got any wild ideas for the next one? And what if a modern Delta team tried to take a medieval castle? Check it out. It's on your screen now.